And now we're finally getting into our groove here as a two smart Dembele. Looking for an early cross from Memphis Depay. And oh my god. How have we just scored that? Still Messi. Cross coming back in for Ansu Fati. Gets the shot off and we've actually scored. Ansu Fati in the Champions League has just scored a potential winner. So, you guys wanted to see the shades on in today's video? Well, we're making it happen. Just for the intro though, just for the intro. Welcome back to another episode of the Barcelona Career Mode series over on FIFA 21. This is episode number 12. It's a big one today, fellas, because we've got the Champions League round of 16. The second leg, the first leg was absolutely insane as we took on Borussia Dortmund. We did end up winning 2-1, but it was difficult. And now we're going to Germany, to the Signal Iduna Park, where we've got a big challenge ahead of us. That stadium is difficult to play at. Let's not forget, we've also got Atletico Madrid in the Spanish Cup semi-finals, but we're in a good spot since we did beat them 2-0 in that first leg, so not too worried about this. Of course, we're going to try and make some progress in La Liga as well, but apart from that, there is a certain former La Masia player I want to talk about in today's episode, so stay tuned for that. So if you guys are enjoying the Barcelona career mode series over on FIFA 21, drop a like on the video, 5,000 likes, and I'll get you an episode tomorrow. Subscribe for more FIFA 21 career mode content. We're making a push for 300,000 subscribers this year, so every subscriber counts. And well, let's get this started. So it's now time for a press conference. Get your questions answered by dropping them down in the comment section below. First one of the day. No need to replace Mirilim Pjanic. You could just play Felipe Coutinho there by changing his position to central midfield. And you can play Messi and Cam and Dembele on the right. A good comment. Last episode, we talked about how Pjanic was going down in his overall. And replacing him might be something we got to do for season 2. Coutinho in central midfield, unfortunately, I just don't think will work. A midfield of De Jong, Messi and Coutinho will just get completely destroyed because we've got Messi and Coutinho who don't really defend. De Jong will have to do way too much work and he's also a player that likes to get forward. So that is just going to be a disaster. Plus, converting Coutinho to a central midfielder will take 400 weeks. So... Yep, that's not happening. Coutinho will remain a cam for us and we might have to look elsewhere for a central midfielder. Maybe just using Ricky Puig could be the option. We'll see though. Again, keep the suggestions coming in for what we should do when we do eventually decide to replace Mirilim Pjanic. Next up, what is it with Messi sometimes fluctuating between a 92 and a 93 rating? Whenever you enter the team sheets, it shows 93, but while playing, it's a 92. That's actually a very, very good comment because I've noticed that as well. And my explanation is that because Messi's form right now is excellent, it's the best it can be on FIFA career mode. I think that's overriding the downgrades normally a player above the age of 30 gets. Because look at players like Pjanic, they're going down, but their form isn't on excellent. So I guess when you've got an older player whose form is like extremely good on excellent, their downgrades will be much slower. I don't think Messi has lost any stats bar maybe one or two here and there. His sprint speed and acceleration, I think, have stayed the same. So has composure and all. So I think we found a way to make Messi's career last as long as possible on this career. Because I have seen people have some of their older players retire in the first season itself. But here with Leo Messi, because of his form, he's retaining his overall, which is awesome to see. But I don't know why the fluctuation happens. I don't really know, I'm confused with that, but it's good to see Messi still 93. I'm pretty sure this time last year when we were doing a Barcelona career mode, Messi was already losing stats. So it's awesome to see him retain that 93 overall. Ooh, this is a big one. Do you consider bringing Xavi Simmons back because Mirilim Pjanic is going down in his ratings? I mean, irrespective of what happens with Pjanic, I kind of want to bring back Xavi Simmons to Barcelona. We know he was at La Masia for a while. He was a really top prospect, a lot of hype around him. I think he was even one of the captains at the youth level. And then, of course, for money or for whatnot, he moved to PSG. I don't honestly blame him. The situation at Barcelona, the board and all is terrible. So him moving, it kind of makes sense. But honestly, I do want to bring him back to Barcelona. I just feel like he's the kind of player who would fit perfectly in our midfield. Imagine a midfield of him, De Jong and Ricky Puig in the future. Oh my god, would that be insane. So we're definitely going to scout Xavi Simmons, get to know him more and see how much he'll cost. Now, the good thing about him is that it's going to be a super cheap transfer. 5.4 million release clause. We can definitely afford him, but... Honestly, let me know your thoughts on this in the comments section. Xavi Simmons back at Barcelona. 
I think we gotta make it happen in the future. With that press conference done, let's move on. It is Leo Messi who was absolutely outstanding in the last episode, especially in the Champions League. When we were 1-0 down against Dortmund, Leo Messi stepped up and delivered against Borussia as we made a comeback and beat them 2-1. And that's why he picks up the Player of the Episode award. Okay, so as you guys know, we've switched to Ultimate Difficulty in this series, but recently, EA just made an update to FIFA career mode and they've made competitive mode harder and more difficult. So I want to give it a go. So let's try out the legendary difficulty with competitor mode on and see what's up. Forgot to mention this, but I'm definitely scouting Xavi Simmons to get to know more about him. The 17 year old is valued, I guess, at 5.4 million. That's his release clause. I think his potential is like 85 or something. We're going to scout him now. I think we'll get back more details in like 12 days and then I'll let you know what his overall and everything is looking like. It's now time for some La Liga action as we take on Cadiz at the camp now, a team that are 19th in the league. This should be a routine victory for us, no doubt. With my first team, guys, we've been beaten 3-1 by Cadiz. I literally used my strongest 11 and this has happened. Wow. We might have to be more careful in the games which we sim because this is atrocious. They're 19th in La Liga and we've just been beaten 3-1 by them. Oh my god, what are these play ratings? Oh, Coutinho got sent off. But still, that doesn't explain it. Alvaro Negredo with a brace. I am really surprised at this and this is not good for us in La Liga. Well, that draw has certainly made La Liga a lot more interesting and there goes our unbeaten record. And to lose that record to a 19th place team is a bit embarrassing. We're still a point above Real Madrid, a couple above Atleti, but now we've got to be more careful because... Yeah, that, that was a real wake-up call. Alaves are 17th in La Liga and I definitely want to switch up the squad and give some of the players like Pedri and Ricky Puig more of an opportunity. So we've got them playing. Jules Conde starts as well, along with Longley. We need to manage our centre-backs well because Eric Garcia picked up a five-month-long injury. Max Arens is getting his first game, like first actual game. We haven't really used them at all. So very eager to see what he can do on the pitch. That's our team. Barca Alaves, we need the win. I'm honestly really keen to see what the new update to competitor mode is like. They have clearly said that they've made it a lot more difficult, which I'm really keen to see how it works. Of course, I'd rather play on legendary difficulty and with competitor mode on than on ultimate difficulty because it's more realistic, I guess. So hopefully they've made a proper change and have made it hard. Oh, here we go now with Ansu Fati. The game feels a lot slower with this new update, which I'm not too sure about. Here's Ansu though. Taking it wide, maybe a cross in, that's a good delivery into the box and well, well, well. Well, legendary difficulty, ultimate difficulty, what not, you're not going to stop a cross like that from Ansu Fati. It was literally perfect, Trincao made a darting run into the box, right place, right time and the Portuguese international scored there. But that was all about Ansu Fati. I don't know how we managed to whip that in with that much power. I'm telling you, man, th these R1 square crosses are so, so OP. You guys need to be doing them more often. And there you go. With that, we've opened things up against the 17th place team in La Liga. Alaves might create a chance here with Lucas. Now it's Reyes who shoots and that almost went in. Okay, okay. Calm down, Alaves. Calm down. We're still leading 1-0, but they're creating chances now, which is getting me a bit worried. We can't afford to drop points again after losing to Cadiz in that last game. Now it's Ricky Puig. Good first touch. I'm spreading it wide for Ansu. Can he get there? Can he keep it in? He keeps it in. Antoine Griezmann, that is outrageous from Barcelona. How has Ansu Fati kept that in? I mean, wow. Just wow. Ricky Puig with an unbelievable crossfield pass, but Ansu to keep that in, that might be assist of the season for me. That cross was simply sensational. I'm sure the Alaves defender actually gave up before itself because like there was no way Ansu was keeping that in or at least we all thought but he somehow did and the cross was perfect as well Antoine Griezmann gets on the score, score sheet that's going to do wonders for his confidence as Barcelona double up their advantage against the struggling 17th place Alaves now Griezmann oh what a pass that is for Ansu again who's got an in behind this is too easy for Ansu looks to bring it inside this time still Ansu Fati goes for goal but shot gets blocked this time around, Ansu is having a phenomenal game. I think he's one of my favorite players in this series. Probably second favorite after Leo Messi, but I'm enjoying using him so much. He definitely even outperforms Usman Dembele and whatnot in this series. It's it's crazy how OP he is this year on FIFA, especially now that we've got him on like a five-star skill and a five-star weak foot rating. Lucas on the ball, looking to get in behind. Jules Conde had to make like a perfect challenge then. That he did. As we do get the ball away in style, we might be able to hit them on the break. Here goes Pedri. Go on. 
This would be a great moment for Pedri to score for Barcelona. Pedri shoots and wow, what a finish. As Barcelona sink Alaves, we make it 3-0. Literally moments away from possibly conceding to scoring on the break. I swear this team on the counter is something else as we send Pedri through on goal. And that's a really good finish for the young, from the youngster. He's, he's had a difficult season, man. Not many opportunities for him, but... When he's been given those opportunities, he's taken them with both hands as he scores a really nice goal there as Barcelona make it 3-0. Ball given away for Alaves and we might be getting opened up here. Not really. Max Haddens now. Nah, come on, man. You've got to be playing the passes better than that. Rincon. Chance for Joselu. Out wide for Lucas Perez, the former Arsenal player. Tries to turn me there, but Max Arens does incredibly well to defend that. And with that, Barcelona secure a convincing win against Alaves. As expected, they're 17th in the league. We should be winning a game like this in style. And that's exactly what we've done. A good way to bounce back after that defeat to Cadiz. Both Real Madrid and Atletico won their respective games. And that's why the point difference between us and Real Madrid is just one. And us and Atleti is just two. La Liga is going to have a grandstand finish this season. Hopefully, we'll be champions of Spain. But for now, in this episode, we're moving away to other competitions. As first up, we've got the Spanish Cup semi-finals. The second leg against Atletico. We're in a very good spot to secure a spot in the final. Let's not mess it up. Let's get the job done at the camp now against Atleti. Here we go. Barcelona, Atletico, Madrid in the Spanish Cup semi-finals. I mean, we've got the advantage here. 2-0 from the first leg. It'd be surprising if we choke this. We're not letting that happen, guys. We're up against Luis Suarez once again. It's going to be epic. Messi and Suarez fighting it out against each other once again. I'm going with a strong team because I don't want to take any chances. I want to get this game out of the way and make my spot secure in the final. So, Barcelona Atleti, let's get into it. Not going to lie, this game is going to give us a good representation of how we're going to deal with a situation like this. Maybe in the Champions League, you know, where we've got an advantage from the first leg. You guys know... Situations like this for Barcelona have been catastrophic in the last few years. So, yeah, let's see how we cope with the pressure. Already looking on the front foot. Griezmann. Now it's Coutinho. Mirilin Pjanic through on goal already. Early chance for us. Big save from Jan Oblak. I should have just gone forward and then taken the shot. I don't know why I took it from distance. Barcelona looking really good in the early few moments. If we can score an early goal, I think it's pretty much over. There's no hope for Atleti then. I think we've got a major injury for Atletico here and they're still continuing to play. This is this is weird. Long lay with the block as we do get the ball away. I don't know what's up with Atletico. Finally, they called the playoff, but they just didn't care about Gerard Moreno, who was literally crying in the box. Anyways, he's picked up an injury and it looks like he will be subbed off. We might be seeing Jao Felix come on because it's interesting to not see him on the pitch. And yes, it is. Jao Felix comes on for, of course, Gerard Moreno. I think that's a big upgrade for Atleti. Not, not going to lie, I think... They should have started him from the get-go. Atletico putting a lot of pressure on us and we've crumbled, man. We've literally crumbled. How are we this bad when we've got an advantage, man? Luis Suarez against this former club, Barcelona, runs straight down the camera. This man, honestly, look at him celebrate the camp now. He has no shame whatsoever. And this was a mistake of my doing. I tried clearing the ball, but Dilek just had no power on it. And we've gifted Suarez the goal. And now it's, oh, uh, this, this, this is the last thing we needed. 1-0 down in this second leg. Oh my god. Oh my god, a defense has been opened up yet again with Yannick Carrasco looking inside for Suarez. It's now Jao Felix who's gone through. Jao Felix with the cutback. Wijnaldum with the chance here. We couldn't block that and Atletico Madrid have made it to all. Call me Ernesto Valverde, guys, because I have literally crumbled. And it's Wijnaldum again of all players. I'm getting PTSD now from Anfield. Oh my god, how have we crumbled this bad? It's 2 all now. Atletico have completely nullified our advantage. Things are not going according to plan here. Things are not going according to plan. We need to wake up. Antoine Griezmann's first touch was simply sensational here. Still Griezmann. Oh, he brings it inside brilliantly. Still Griezmann. Could look for a cross maybe. Puts it inside for Felipe Coutinho. And that gives us a lot of hope. We get a big goal in this one. 3-2 now in the time. But remember, if Atleti score another one, they'll have the away goal advantage. And we'll need to score, what, two goals more than them. So the tie is still pretty much at stake. Griezmann did incredibly well here. The way he just beat the other defender on that left side and then the cutback for Coutinho was simply sensational. The Brazilian maestro gets us back in this one. 
It's a big goal for us and at the right moment just before half time. Gonna be real with you guys, Usman Dembele has been really underwhelming in this one. So I'm gonna bring on Memphis Depay to play on that left flank. He doesn't lose any overalls playing there, so it's fine. He's got that as one of his preferred positions. Let's see how Depay, Griezmann and Messi fare in a front three. Yannick Carrasco on the ball right now. Looks inside for Felix. Oh my god, that is a terrible challenge from me. That could easily be a sending off here. I thought Felix was going to be looking my way. Thank God that's a yellow. It could have easily been a red card. Now it's Renan Lodi. Remember, if Atleti score one, we're in deep trouble. So we've got to not let that happen. Here's Koke. Looks for Felix. This is going to be difficult to defend against. Oh my God, Felix has completely done me there. We're actually going to choke in the Spanish Cup. I cannot believe this. It's 3-3 on aggregate, but Atleti have the away goal advantage. No, actually, we don't need to score... Um, Correct me if I'm wrong, we don't need to score two more goals. All we need is one more goal because then we'll be 4-3 on aggregate. So there's still hope. But as things stand, Atleti are making it through to the next round or the finals of the Spanish Cup. So yeah, I kind of had my math completely messed up there. We need just one goal. Okay, that's given me a bit of confidence now. One goal and we'll make it to the final. Come on. Oh, we might get that one goal already. Messi has managed to keep himself on. Here goes Leo on the attack now. Still Messi. Keeps it in brilliantly, tries to get the shot off, but the angle was too difficult. Easy save for Oblak. Atleti are just keeping possession now and wasting time. This is infuriating, man. Are we actually going to bottle after getting a 2-0 advantage away from home? This, this is peak. This is honestly peak. I don't know how this has happened here. I'm literally even pushing with my centre-backs to try and get the ball off them, but I simply can't. I, I cannot believe I've done this. There's still 5-10 to 10 minutes to go, but oh my god. How are we in this situation? Felix now on the ball. Still Felix here. I think we've committed a foul there. This is not working out well for us. We are struggling. Go on, Griezmann. Looks for Pjanic. Messi is holding his run, but I'm going to go the other way. Antoine Griezmann, big chance. Can he score though? Antoine Griezmann in the 90th minute out of nowhere. Let's go, guys. Barcelona make it 4-3. It's Griezmann against his former team. Suarez celebrated. I'm going to celebrate with Griezmann. And that's that for this one. I cannot see Atleti scoring another one. This has been one of the most ridiculous Spanish Cup games I've ever seen in my life, at least on FIFA. Antoine Griezmann finally comes good. And it had to be against his former team. He scores yet again as Barcelona make it 4-3 on aggregate. Come on, guys. We're going to the final. I know we made it look extremely hard, but at least we showed the desire in the end after being in a difficult situation to make the comeback and get the job done. Come on. That's got to be by far the most exciting game of this series so far because honestly, it was insane. This was legit nuts and... This is why I love career mode, man. I love this kind of situation and I'm so glad we dealt with it really well and we come out on top here. Barcelona in the finals of the Spanish Cup as we'll be taking on Real Madrid. That was tense, but you're through. What are your thoughts? I guess we won it in the first leg because let's be real, that 2-0 win that we got at the Wanda was absolutely massive. And even though Atleti beat us here 3-2, I think that game sealed the deal for us. And yes, it's Real Madrid, the team we'll be facing in the Spanish Cup final. Can't wait for this game, man. It could be our chance to win our second trophy of the series. This is going to be fun. The scout report for Xavi Simmons is here. He's 67 rated at the moment, and I'm sure his potential is like 85. But with dynamic potential, you could really get him to whatever rating you want. I definitely want to invest in this signing, man. We could get him for like 2.5 to 2.8 million. Honestly, I am so tempted to pull the plug on this and get this done right now so we have him for next season because his value is only going to go up and it's it just makes sense to, you know, get him on a cheap, you know, for the future. This could be a great investment, bringing back Xavi Simmons. Let me know in the comments section if this is something you guys want to see because I am definitely down to make it happen. We simulated this one against Granada with our second team and thankfully we walk away with a 2-1 win. There's no shock like the Cadiz game this time around, which I do appreciate. Good to see Pedri get on the score sheet along with Antoine Griezmann. So I was able to switch Adama Traore's position to a right midfielder, but I realized that's not really going to help us. So I'm going to put him on a right back plan and let's just hope in a few years, he'll become a right back. But I don't think he's going to be at the club for that long. But oh well. It's the same situation in La Liga. Real Madrid and Atleti both are keeping pace with us this season. Which is interesting. But of course now, 
it's all about the Champions League. We take on Borussia Dortmund, second leg, Champions League round of 16. You guys saw how I almost crumbled against Atleti after having like a 2-0 advantage. So we can't let that happen here. We're playing at the Signal Iduna Park. We've got to step up and we've got to secure that spot in the quarterfinals of the Champions League. This is how I've got my team set up against Borussia Dortmund in this big Champions League game at the Signal Iduna Park. Messi starting in cam because I wanted to have both Dembele and Ansu Fati in the team. Depay starts up top. It was a difficult choice because Griezmann's been in good form. But Depay, man, there's just something about him in this game. At the back, Dest, De Ligt, Longley and Alba. That's our team. Barcelona, Dortmund. Let's take a look at the confirmed Dortmund 11. That Haaland and Jamie Vardy combo up top is going to be ruthless to deal with, man. Honestly, they've got Sancho, Guerrero. I think it's a similar team to what we faced in the first leg. A big challenge as we're facing the yellow wall. And yeah, it's going to be tough. Dortmund actually look very good. They've been on the front foot so far. Jamie Vardy on the ball going backwards. They're keeping possession well. Emre Chan on the ball now. Out wide for Guerrero. Now it's Vardy. They're playing some great football here. Vardy looking for Haaland who shoots. Big save from Ter Stegen. we got to be careful of Erling Braut Haaland. We know how good he is. And he almost scored there. And he almost got Dortmund back in this one. Remember, if Dortmund win this game 1-0... We're out of the Champions League. They've got the away goals advantage. Going backwards now for Witzel. Emre Chan. Good play again from Dortmund. They're pinning us back here. Chance for Haaland who shoots off the crossbar. We somehow get it away. Oh my god. Oh my god. Ter Stegen made another big save there. In the Champions League, Ter Stegen has been so clutch for us. Those two saves of Haaland, they shouldn't have happened. Haaland probably deserved at least one goal there. We've got really lucky and we're still in the lead in this tie. Good ball for Leo. We know how good Leo is at dribbling. Messi gets it on his left foot, tries to go for goal. Does get the long shot off from outside the box, but Berkey had that one covered. Messi's finesse shots. We haven't really scored many of them from outside the box, which is a concern. Oh man, Sancho running at Jordi Alba is something I do not like. Still, Sancho pushes him off, but Jordi Alba recovers well, but can't recover well enough as here's Vardy. Now it's Haaland. We've got to avoid getting him to shoot because when Haaland shoots, it's danger. Pjanic defends that well and on the break we might be able to do something as Ansu looks for former Borussia Dortmund player Usman Dembele and against the run of play we've hit them at the break as Barcelona make it 3-1 on aggregate. This is a big goal in the tie because it gives us an away goal as well. A bit of a cushion to you know control the situation. Dembele against his former team. We know how he had to fight with the Dortmund board not go to training and what not to move to Barcelona and now he's inflicting more damage onto that club scoring against them in their stadium in the Champions League big finish from Dembele Ansu Fati I think grabbed the assist for this one he's had a tremendous episode as Barcelona against the run of play have got the advantage half time against Dortmund they really put us under pressure in the first few minutes with Haaland almost scoring twice but we responded brilliantly on the break Dembele scored a really good goal that's what happens when you have him on the right side. It just works. Ansu was superb in this half. Let's keep it going in the second half and I'm sure we'll make it to, of course, the quarterfinals of the Champions League. Ah, problems here for us. Vardy getting in behind. He's gotten in behind. Vardy goes for goal and he's missed that as well. The chances Dortmund have had, they could have easily scored a fair few goals in this one. Vardy, Haaland, all missing opportunities here. That's, that's something I didn't expect. I mean... Dortmund definitely deserve to score at least a goal or two in this one. Sancho, now it is Erling Haaland. Oh, come on. That is a phenomenal pass for Vardy. He's going to score this. Finally, Borussia Dortmund get themselves a goal. It's 1-1. And the thing is, it could get dangerous for us now. Because if Dortmund score another, we're going to extra time. So, we're going to have to change our approach now. And I think I'm going to make some changes. I'm going to bring on Sergio Busquets for the rest of this one. More of a defensive outlook. And I'm going to have him on stay back while attacking. It's the smart thing to do to bring on a player like Busquets at this stage of the game. That's the plan. Oh my god, we've let Haaland through again. Erling Braut Haaland goes for the chip shot. I pulled Ter Stegen out way too much. What have we just done? I'm a choke artist on FIFA 21, honestly. Oh, not this celebration as well. Oh my god. What has just happened? Honestly. Ah. Oh. We're 2-1 down in this one. 3-3 three, three on aggregate if I'm not wrong. Which means this game is going to extra time. I'm not ready for this man. I am seriously not ready for this. Wow. Uh, 10 minutes to go. We need to score. And yes, we're going to extra time for the first time in this series already. 
Wow. Champions League round of 16 and we're going all the way into extra time. Oh my god, is this insane, honestly. I'll be real with you guys, this hasn't been Memphis Depay's game, so on comes Antoine Griezmann. Come on Griezmann, this is your chance. You were superb against Atleti, get the job done again for me. Time is flying by in extra time right now, we've barely done anything in the first half of extra time and now we're in the second half already as they get in behind here big chance for Borussia Dortmund Busquets trying to make the challenge this is insane Sergio Busquets comes up clutch there as we survive oh my god this is way too stressful man I cannot believe we're in this situation right now this is nuts still De Jong gets lucky to keep the ball there it's now Usman Dembele I need some movement I need some movement. Des provides a bit of movement. Antoine Griezmann looking to turn his man. Still Griezmann. Brilliantly done. Antoine Griezmann. Let's go. He did it against Atletico as well. And now he's done it against Borussia Dortmund. We're going to sip the tea here as Barca make it 4-3 on aggregate. He is the hero, guys. Antoine Griezmann is the hero of the episode. Unbelievable. He's done it twice now for us. This is nuts. Looks like we'll survive this Champions League round of 16 but oh my god have we made it difficult now Borussia Dortmund need two goals to go through if I'm not wrong because of the away goals rule oh this is such a relief guys Barcelona could well and truly be through to the quarterfinals now of the Champions League we've made it look really hard this was way too stressful guys I don't want to be playing games like this anymore this was way too much for me but hey we got it done 4-3 on aggregate Barcelona are through to the Champions League quarterfinals and oh my god was this stressful we've got it done though it's Griezmann the match winner we somehow scraped through the Champions League round of 16 and we're through to of course the quarterfinals the draw has yet to be made and I think you guys will find out who we'll be up against in the next episode but man the Champions League knockout rounds are something else before we wrap up the episode, make your vote count for the player of the episode award. And honestly, I don't think we even need a vote. Antoine Griezmann has to win the award in the next episode. Ansu Fati though deserves a lot of credit as well. Maybe he deserves it as well. But Griezmann was something else in this episode. Scoring so many important goals for us. So yeah, I think he's probably going to win it. Next episode, we could be making a signing or an investment for the future in Xavi Simmons. Let me know in the comment section if you guys want to see this happen. But apart from that, that's where we're going to leave you off for today's episode. I mean, so much happened. That game against the Atleti was nuts. Dortmund game was even more insane. Hope you guys are enjoying this career mode. And if you guys aren't, drop a like in the video. Subscribe if you're new around here. And well, I'll catch you all next time.